الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. We send peace and blessings on his final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. On this blessed of days, and may Allah SWT make it a source of blessing for you and for me and through us. May Allah SWT enlighten and guide humanity and make it a source of blessing and mercy and forgiveness for them. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, in Surah Al Hujurat, "O oh humanity, surely we have created you from a single male and female, and we have made you into nations and tribes in order that you may relate and get to know one another. Surely, the most noble of you before God is the one, uh, ones who are." Most God conscious or pious from you, surely God is all aware, all knowing, and fully informed. With this ayah, I remind ourselves that tomorrow, the eleventh of July, is the twenty-fifth commemoration of the day twenty-five years ago on the 11th of July, when the uh, Bosnian Serbs, led by their military leader, took over a so-called United Nations safe haven in Bosnia. And despite the presence of United Nations uh soldiers in inverted commas and the world watching this uh military uh, occupation led to the massacre blatant murdering and butchering of over 8000 bosnian muslim men and boys blatant capture and murder and then buried in mass graves while the world stood still and watched and did nothing. Together with the expulsion of women and children, and uh, as we know beyond that, rape of many women and uh, girls uh, as a matter of ethnic cleansing. Uh, as the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan accepted years later, as one of the worst examples of ethnic cleansing since World War Two, So how can we forget? Uh, this wretched uh, cowardice act. Uh, so this, tomorrow is again a, an annual commemoration uh, for us to be reminded of uh, the butchery that human beings can do and also a reminder for us that really a regret for us as humanity, especially us in Europe, that we stood still and allowed this to happen right under our noses. In fact, the, I, I remember hearing it in the news, following it day in, day out, the uh, ongoings in Bosnia and the hand that the politicians of Europe, including Britain, uh, played. Uh, in doing nothing, in fact, doing nothing to help the uh, Bosnian Mo uh, Muslims uh, in this onslaught and slaughter. 
And this is to not forget those who perished at the hands of this butchery, not to forget those who were put in concentration camps, not to forget their families and the women and children who lived on through that uh, wretched trauma. Uh, and that our prayers are with those, may Allah SWT take them as shuhada and martyrs and forgive them, have mercy on them and uh, and bring uh, uh, good from their progeny uh, and give patience to those who still uh, uh, are living with those uh, uh, memories and nightmares. Uh, but it is also a reminder for us uh, in the commemoration of this day that um, we should be against all kinds of hatred. No doubt there are differences and God Almighty, the Creator, created such differences already Himself. But as He mentioned, as He created us from a single male and female, there are four fathers, uh, Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa, uh, and making us into nations and tribes, not because, not so that the differences should create hatred, but so that we may relate to and get to know one another, to respect one another. Uh, so the differences are a part of the bounty and signs of God and his variety that he created in his creation, including as as God Almighty Allah SWT says, وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ in the variations of the languages and of color, surely in this are signs for those people who have knowledge. This is part of variety. We have differences anyway. The differences, natural difference can be in language, in color, in nationality. Those are not something that we choose. They are, they are part and parcel of where we are born, where we live and in our genes. And difference can be in religion, which is the only one where we make a choice. But these differences, uh, certainly from an Islamic point of view, Allah SWT didn't create these differences for us to uh, look down and usurp the rights of others. In fact, all humanity is equal. Uh, and these are the teachings of Islam from time immemorial, over 1400 years ago, the teachings of the Quran and teachings of the Prophet, the final messenger to the whole of humanity. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who said, as is reported in Musnad of Ahmad, La fadl li arabi ala ajami, wa la li ajami ala arabi, wa la li ahmar ala aswad, wa la li aswad ala ahmar, illa bi taqwa. There is no virtue, a superiority of an, for an Arab over a non-Arab, neither of a non-Arab over an Arab, neither is a superiority over uh, a, a white person over a black person, neither a black person over a white person, except, except, in God consciousness, in line with what the uh, what Allah says in the Quran, uh, uh, it is God consciousness and good character, and that good character does not entail hatred for difference and hatred for others. In fact, beyond that. We are to we are taught in the Quran uh, to be just, just. Even in the face of um, um, uh, hatred from others, not to be unjust. In fact, the Quran teaches us to return a a bad turn with a good turn. That is seen as the character of believers and Muslims, and. Even in regards to religion, of course, religion is something to find the truth. It is a choice for every human being that they have to make. Each human being has been given that freedom of choice from their creator. And then it is up to them to take the steps and up to God himself, the Almighty, to guide people. So Allah SWT therefore says, La ikraha fiddin, there is no compulsion in religion. That right guidance has been made clear from wrong uh, the wrong way. 
yeah, from deviance. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ And whoever rejects all that which is false and believes in God, فَقَدْ إِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَنْ فِصَامَ لَهَا Then they have taken hold of a firm grasp yeah, that will not break, that will not separate. وَاللَّهُ in the last Sami on Alim, surely God is all hearing, all knowing. And so clearly the choice, there is no compulsion in religion. Choice has been left for human beings to look for God, to look for truth, to look for justice, to look for the guidance from the Creator who created us and sent us in this world. And despite our differences, despite our differences, and despite, as I said, hatred even to the extent of hatred from other people, Allah SWT says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe, Kunu qawwa mina lillahi shuhada abil qist, O you who have faith, be those who are firm witnesses in standing for justice for God. Kunu qawwa mina lillahi shuhada abil qist, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنْآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا And do not let the hatred of a people seduce you into not doing justice. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Be just, that is the nearest, nearest in being God conscious and pious. In other words, that's a test of whether you are true believers, whether you have faith and awareness of the Creator and God, or is it just lip service? What taqullah? So Allah repeats again: Be in awe and taqwa and aware and fear God, meaning in that you may be unjust. In Allah khabirun bima ta'malun. Surely God is fully aware of all that you do, as if a reminder, a warning. That don't be unjust to man, don't be uh, wrongdoers, don't be tyrants, and don't do harm to others. This is this is our teachings in regards to that. How, how relevant this is when we talk about commemorating uh, the Bosnian massacre, uh, brothers and sisters. We also, in line with what I'm saying and the verses of the Quran. And the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu is so relevant to the Black Lives um, uh, Matter issue that has been going on uh, for many weeks now. Of the uh, hundreds of years actually of constant uh, putting in the gutter of uh, 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 human beings just on the basis of colour. Just on the basis of colour. And of people of colour, of the black race. And and actually, while some things have changed, we find a repetition of the same things every few decades, again and again, despite marches, despite movements, despite uh, movements in Europe or in America, we find the same ugly scenes taking place. Uh, and... and something has to be done no wonder there's been despite the covid situation and lockdown there's been uh, masses of people coming out worldwide demonstrating uh, about this ingrained uh, hatred and putting down of uh, a, a whole race of people based uh, on the color and the teachings of islam are totally contrary to the uh, against this uh, kind of behavior. Um, so we certainly strongly add our voice because it's a voice of justice with the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Um, and as we uh, uh, add our voices for justice for that, for justice for that, which is what the Quran is teaching about. But you know, it's uh, strange. The lessons we learn is that we must not be inactive. As we learn the lessons of the fact that we must not be inactive and not allow repetition of uh, 
uh, the Bosnian Muslim massacre taking place, or over eight eight thousand people, uh, we also must uh, must with that re uh, uh, with the Black Lives Matter movement, we must not be also inactive and complacent, and allow this to continue. That we must speak out, yeah, and each person has a responsibility in standing and speaking out for justice. Uh, we don't condone violence and burning of buildings and cars and and behaving in a, uh, in, a, in a thuggish way of any kind. But as law-abiding citizens, we should uh, do all that we can in standing against that which is evil and unjust whether it's based on religion or whether it's based as it was in the Bosnian situation or whether it's based on race or colour on in either direction. And, you know, um, it's astonishing, despite saying that, I'm not... We have to have hope. But would I be surprised if, that if a similar situation as the Bosnian massacre took place now... And whether we came out and spoke and came out even demonstrated in millions, as was the case for the war, uh, the, the, the war on uh, Iraq, would I be surprised if the politicians didn't listen and did uh, whatever their agendas were pushing them to? No, I wouldn't be surprised. But that should not deter us. We shouldn't decide on that basis that Louis came out in millions against the Iraq war and nothing changed, so no point going out. No, we still have a responsibility to speak, speak against injustice, speak against tyranny of any kind. So that is a responsibility we, we have as human beings and we have as believers, as Muslims, brothers and sisters. Uh, so that wouldn't de uh, deter me. And it's interesting, in the last few days, I was just hearing about the Black Lives Matter. Uh, somebody that many people will know, the great fastballer Michael Holding, who uh, played, of course, internationally for the West Indies, uh, great team of the 70s and 80s. Um, interesting hearing him uh, responding uh, to some people saying that all lives matter and white lives matter. And I liked what he said. He said, well, we don't need people coming out with banners to say white lives matter. We already clearly know that. There's no slogan that's necessary to substantiate that. But we need to have a slogan and we need to have placards and we need to voice that opinion that black lives matter because clearly they do not and they haven't for a long time. And isn't it interesting that his words about what we are taught at schools and the need for education are words which are not new. I heard him say things like, how is it that in schools we were taught about, even about religion, we were taught about history and the great founders of history and the great inventors, they were all white. And we were taught even in religion that Jesus with the blonde hair and blue eyes uh, and that uh, the traitors and the devil is depicted as being black. It's not surprising then you get the kind of institutional racism that we're so strongly against. So, however, his words are an echo of the same words that were spoken, were they not, by the likes of Malcolm X around 60 years ago, brothers and sisters. And he's repeating the same things, and that is really sad. They need to be said again, of course, but it is sad that despite uh, 60 years passing, we're almost back to a, a feeling of being in square one again. But that's not to become hopeless. That's not to lose hope and think we don't need to do anything it is to actually become stronger. And with the kind of power of social media nowadays, the voices can be brought together to bring about change institutionally, to bring about change through education. Uh, education for blacks and whites, yeah? so that there is no racism 
from even the blacks and coloreds in the direction of the whites. So that the, the blacks through education also have a sense of uh, confidence and a sense of pride of, of from, from their history and what they've contributed and what they still are contributing. And so that whites have uh, a, a, a reality check of the history. Yeah a reminder of the atrocities that have been done and a reminder of the contribution made in history despite it not being taught and written in history uh, by uh, people of other uh, people of color and people of other religions and certainly in this regard for Europe the contribution the muslim great scientists and philosophers and educationalists made to the develop, development and success of Western Europe. Um, so, um, I say all this with a hope for the future, um, that we all have to play a part in that. And, you know, when I talk about racism, I think we also need to, as Muslims, to do in uh, most of our Muslim lands, including the Indian subcontinent and, and those who are here from that, do a bit of navel-gazing as to the uh, racism that exists amongst us as a community itself. How still, in even in the Muslim Asian community, never mind the Asian community at large, how the white colour amongst the Asian themselves is prided over and cherished and looked as superior over the black skin colour of the Asians and how they look down upon, whether for marriage or whether for status or whether for job. And that's an absolute disgrace. And that disgrace we have to beat out and cleanse out of our own selves and our own families and our own children and the caste attitude that we have and when it comes to especially marriages and uh, uh, and beauty and whether handsomeness is linked with these things or not. No, 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 no. This is something that that we have neglected from our own teachings of Islam. Yeah. So we, before we point the finger at others, we have to self-check ourselves. If we want to speak on these issues, brothers and sisters, of being just and not being racist uh, and... and um, then we have to exemplify that, brothers and sisters, ourselves through our own uh, character and behaviour, internally, inwardly and outward, outwardly. Is that not so? So I, I call ourselves to account, ourselves to check ourselves, ourselves to teach our future generations uh, that that which is right and that which is correct. And I believe, brothers and sisters, with great respect to all those who are calling for education, that actually education is not going to be the only answer. I believe, as the verses have pointed out, when God Almighty mentions about creating us as nations of tribes and that the most honoured and noble before God is the one that is most God-conscious and pious, then he says, surely God is all-knowing, fully aware. In other words, you take God out of the equation. It is, it is recognizing our creator, recognizing that one day we've got to answer to our creator, that inner police check, that's going to produce the best of results. Yeah? In fact, atheism and the dogma of atheism and that which is spreading of godlessness in society, I don't ever believe will get rid, uh, get rid of racism. In fact, atheism with the ideas of Darwinian evolution Darwinian in vertical evolution that were perpetrated of us being animals were no different from being from chimps and gorillas and in fact that uh, looking at Darwinian re uh, evolution that the blacks are seen inferior from that concept, uh, aspect to the whites who evolved from the blacks and therefore are more superior. These kind of ideas and the animalistic behavior, that if we're animals, it's survival of the fittest, the strongest overrule, uh, who cares, what the, what, whatever the matter, just like animals, we, uh, uh, we kill and the stronger takes over the weaker. Those are the ideas that really fit with atheism 
uh, and uh, the, the ideas of godlessness. So I don't believe that will produce the results of ever getting rid of racism. It is only by turning to our creator who created us as equal, who's telling us he created us as equals, who's telling us not to look down or raise up somebody on the basis of their colour and their language and nationality. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the raising up and virtuous and superiority is only before God basing, based on how we behave, what our character is, what deeds we do of good to others, to other human beings, to the environment and to the animal kingdom around us. Uh, that is our humanness, that is our uniqueness, and that is all linked with faith, brothers and sisters, indeed. And some people will say, well, it was uh, it was Christianity, and look how, despite being pra so-called practicing Christians, that they uh, carried on treating the blacks as slaves and wretched way. Well, they weren't following Christianity. Uh, they were following their own desires, and they were following the purse and the money, which deluded them, which actually made them into deviant people. Yeah, they weren't following the teachings, uh, uh, the truthful teachings of God, um, um, and so it. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't throw God out just because some people behaved in a wretched way, abusing the religion. Yeah. There is no way of remedying this except by turning to God and except by knowing that one day we're going to stand before God to answer for our deeds. So I finish with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ reminding us as Muslims and believers, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المسلم من سلم الناس من يده ومن لساني A Muslim is the one from whom from whose hand and whose tongue human beings feel safe and secure. وَالْمُؤْمِنْ مَنْ أَمِنَهُ النَّاسُ عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ And a mu'min, a faithful person, is the one in whom human beings put their trust in regards to their lives and their property. This is reported in the Nisa'i. May Allah SWT Makers of this, these kind of Muslims. May Allah SWT make us of mu'mineen like this. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu ka awli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Innahu huwal ghafurur rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.